Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is just going to be a quick little fix up video. I recently got a comment from one of my loyal subscribers who said that the financial modeling prep API that we use to get finance information in Simple Trader now requires an API key. So since we don't have an API key, if we look at Simple Trader, when we try to get any information from this API, we get nothing back. It probably gives us errors that we are unauthorized because we don't have an API key. So we just get this blank data. So real quick, I'm going to show you guys how we can set up an API key for Simple Trader. So on the Financial Modeling Prep API website documentation page, we can click Get My API Key right here. Also, I'll leave this link in the description. But anyways, you can click this link, and then it takes you to the sign-in page. You guys probably don't have an account. You can create one right here if you want, but I would rather just log in with Google, so that's what I'm going to do. And then after you log in, it takes you to this page where you can select a plan. And actually, you don't really have to do anything on this page. It's kind of misleading. I thought I had to like click this and select plan, but this plan is already active, so nothing else needs to be done. One thing I do want to point out is that we are using the free plan for this API and this does put a limit of 250 requests so make sure you don't spam the API so that you don't go over your limit for requests and I do believe this is a monthly number so it will reset after each month and now we can go back to the documentation page and your API key pops up right here so let's go ahead and copy that and let's use it in Simple Trader. so I'm gonna shut down the application real quick and I'm going to head into our financial modeling prep API project and we have this financial modeling prep HTTP client and this class is important because all of our API calls go through this class so we just need to add the API key in this one spot and it'll fix all of our API calls and that one spot we need to fix is this get async right here so we get async we pass in the URI that we want to call and all you have to do for the financial modeling prep to pass in that API key is add a query parameter at the end of the URI. So let's go ahead and make this into a string that we can pass variables into. Some string interpolation. So we're going to pass in the URI to the string and then at the end we're going to add this query parameter and we're going to call it API key and we're going to set that equal to my API key. So you can just paste in your API key right here. And now if we run this, as you can see we get this major index information now. So that is great. If you're watching this from earlier in the series, then just append the API key to your single API call in the major index service. And once you get farther into the series and you start setting up dependency injection, then go ahead and come back to this video and set up the HTTP client factory and all of that good stuff. But for now, just append the API key to your URL so that you can get the data that you need. Now one thing I want to fix is instead of just putting this API key right here, I want to make this video a little bit more useful and show you how to set up a config file in WPF so you can store the API key in there and then pass it in to this class. So you just store it in a config file so that you can change it whenever you need to just from the config file. You don't have to dig around in your code if you ever have to change it. So first off we need to get that API key into this class. So let's pass it through the constructor. So let's just add a parameter here for the API key and we will generate a field for that. And now that we have this API key in a field we can replace it down here and just pass it in to this string API key like that. So now we have to pass this API key into this HTTP client, but we actually have a little bit of an issue. So if we go into our services that use this HTTP client, they actually explicitly instantiate one right here. So that means we would have to pass the API key into our major index service and also into our stock price service. But really, I don't think those classes should know about the API key. So what we need to do is take this instantiation out of this class and we can do that by creating an HTTP client factory. 
So let's go ahead and add a new class here. And this is going to be the Financial Modeling Prep HTTP Client Factory. And now this class, I'm going to make this public. And this is just going to have one method and it's going to give us back a Financial Modeling Prep HTTP Client. And we're just going to call it Create HTTP Client. And now all it's going to do is return a new financial modeling prep HTTP client. And that takes in our API key. So where are we going to get that API key from? We're not going to get it from the method parameter. Because if we did that, we'd still have to pass it in whenever we want another HTTP client. So our stock price service would need that API key. So what we're going to do instead is pass it in as a constructor parameter. So let's create a field up here for the API key and let's select that and generate a constructor like that. And now we can just pass it in right here. So that's great. That's good for this class. And now all we have to do is update these services so that they use that HTTP client factory. So we're going to get that through the constructor. So the HTTP client factory, we'll just call it HTTP client factory like that and we're gonna get that through the constructor as well and now let's actually just copy all of this right here and let's move that into our major index service as well like that make sure we place this constructor name and there we go now we have the HTTP client factory and we can replace this new right here and just ask for a HTTP client from this factory like that and we don't have to pass in an API key or anything like that because the factory takes care of that for us so now let's copy this and move that into our stock price service as well so now we need to register this HTTP client factory in our dependency injection container so let's go ahead and do that and then since we register the major index service and the stock price service in this container as well, they will automatically get that HTTP client factory that we register. So let's go ahead and add a singleton, and this is going to be for our HTTP client factory. And we're not just going to register it, we're going to register it with an actual implementation. So we can actually create one right here, like that. And the reason we do this is so that we can pass in the API key right here. So we need to get that API key from somewhere. And what we're going to do is create an app.config for our project. So let's add a new item here. And this is going to be an app.config application configuration file like that. And now in this configuration, we can add some app settings and we're going to add a key so this is how we're going to reference this app setting we're going to name this the finance API key and then we give it a value and we can just paste in our API key like that and there we go so now we have this app setting in here and now we just need to get it into this variable so that we can pass it to our HTTP client factory so let's go ahead and use the configuration manager and we're going to access our app settings because that's where we put that key and we can get a specific key by name so we named that the finance API key like that and now we have our API key let's pass it into our HTTP client factory and there we go, everything should work now. Let's go ahead and test this out, make sure we get the data that we need. So let's go to the home page, and there we go, there's our major index data. So there we go, we set up our API key, we refactored a little bit, set up an HTTP client factory so that we could give it the API key just in one spot. And then we also put our API key into an app.config file so that it's in one spot and we can change it wherever we need to without having to hunt through our code. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, criticisms, 
or comments, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, thank you guys for watching, and be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more.